So let's discuss some, uh, some boring details about uh, implementation, about parallelization of, of uh, the code. Um, and, uh, and we'll try to, uh, to link it to, uh, to current <coughs> hardware. And, and, and you will speak a bit about future hardware as well, right? Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> OK, we'll see. <laughs> OK. Anyway, so um, does everybody know what an MPI rank is? Well, MPI is, uh, if you use MPI, you start, you start these independent processes that we call MPI ranks. And that will essentially run copies of, of the program that communicate with each other. So explicit, there's all kinds of instructions then inside of the program to, uh, to divide the work, to divide the data, and things like this. And there's explicit points uh, where these processes hook up and exchange information. Um, so in that, so that, that are the MPI ranks, these, these um, individual processes that you start. Um, so, and if we look at how the work is, uh, is parallelized and how the, how, that, how the work is explicitly uh, distributed over, over these MPI ranks, <coughs> then at the highest level of parallelization, uh, which is actually an, opt an optional level, um, we distribute over these k points that we have uh, been speaking about. Um, so why is this the highest level? Because uh, it's the highest level in the sense that, that let's consider that we have eight MPI ranks uh, and we want to divide uh, the, gr the, the work over these ranks. At the highest level we create out of these eight MPI ranks, for instance, two groups of four ranks. Right, so in that sense, it's the highest level because it's the first division of our total number of MPI ranks. But it's an optional one. So at this highest level, uh, for instance, uh, if you want to distribute your work over k points, you would use this tag, set k part to something else than 1. Uh, if you set this, for instance, to 2, you create two subgroups of, of MPI ranks, and the first group would work on the first k point, for instance, and the second group on the second one, and the first one on the third, and, and so on and so forth. So the work on these k points gets distributed over these groups, uh, over k par number of groups of these MPI ranks in a round robin fashion. So this is optional, and it has been added fairly recently. And, uh, and because, of, because it was sort of hacked in um, at a later stage, um, the data is not distributed. So the data structures were not set up to distribute the data um, over these groups. <laughs> so data is replicated. So the work is distributed. The, wo the work on a particular k point gets done by a particular group. But the information, uh, this group holds all information for all k points. <coughs> And that is obviously a bit of a problematic strategy. I mean, the problem is that, that redesigning data structures is always much more work than doing something like this. So, so this is the way uh, this was implemented, added later on. But replicating data over these groups, of course, means that your memory demands will rise. So if you have a lot of k points, and you create a lot of these groups, uh, so let's, for instance, imagine ourselves to be on a single node that has a certain portion of memory. If I now uh, start a number of ranks on these groups and use this k-par to divide the work over k points among, among these MPI ranks, each and every one of these ranks will allocate uh, the full amount of memory for the wave functions. So that doesn't get distributed over k points. So your memory demands increase linearly with, uh, with k-par. Um, so why is this nice to use? If you have the memory, it's nice to use this because, uh, it, because it's such a high level of parallelization that there's hardly any communication involved. Many, many operations uh, that the program does uh, um, depend only on, on the k-point itself. So it can work on this, work on this, and, and only at, a, at, a very, at, 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 very, um, at very few occasions does it need information from these other groups that work on other k points, which is very nice, obviously. Is it better yes. to use this in a non self consistent when you have the charge density already? And that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So, so if you have the charge density uh, already, that would 
there, there, for at least for DFT, there would be really no need to communicate anymore. Uh, because cone sum equations at, at a certain k point, they only couple to, uh, to the corresponding equations at another k point through the density. So if you have a density and you keep it fixed, then there would be really almost no need to communicate anymore. Right. I have yeah. a question. So when you say the data is fixed, mm -hmm. so it is not replicated over this does it mean K point group one has to have all the rest of groups wave function say? What do you mean? It does this, yes. Even though even though all it works. Just a yes. Bit of its time, it, it those yes. No, I thought I thought what you mean is each uh, MPI group has all the K points. Yes. Not and wave functions both. Oh. Yes, so it it, it holds it holds the wave functions at all the k points, although it only works on, on a subset of them. Yeah. So allocation of, of data <coughs> it doesn't uh, isn't changed with respect to k bar, right? So even it, if if there would be this possibility, obviously, but uh, but that would involve. Uh, but yeah. wouldn't that necessarily require that for wave functions to be up to date? You need communication. Um, um, actually, there's so they do this; they synchronize, but only at very, very limited uh, instances. They they do update the information of the other guys. Yes, yes, that is true. So, what does this mean? This means, for instance, that each group. Uh, can, so, if they synchronize, so they work on uh, on the k point uh, on the wave functions at a certain k point, and another group works on another one. Then they synchronize the wave functions. Each can use exactly the same algorithms to compute the density. They have all the informations to do this. So that, I mean, it's not, not saying that there's not another way to do this and, and there's not a better way to do this. But this is the way it was. It, this was the, the quickest way to do it. And, uh, and it was added as, as more or less as, as, as an afterthought. Uh, so why why is this not the, <coughs> why is this not the first thing that you do? Um, the f this is not the first strategy that we have followed because if you go to large systems, you will have less and less k points normally. So this is not the thing that you would. Uh, it lends itself t for very efficient parallelization, but under many circumstances, it doesn't bring a lot because if you have a very large system, you have only one k point. Well, this. Uh, you, you couldn't parallelize over this, right? Right. So, uh, so, so it's not saying that this is in, in any way a perfect strategy, but that is the, the way it is, and that is the highest level. So it's the first division that we make uh, in our MPI ranks. So the default level of parallelization is over uh, orbitals, over these cone sham uh, orbitals. Right, so that is, that is within these groups. So let's assume that we have uh, only one uh, for the sake of simplicity. Uh, k bar is one, so we have uh, our original group, of the total group of MPI ranks. So the default level of parallelization is that the um, wave functions in their entirety, each band gets assigned to uh, one MPI rank. And, uh, and that is done in a, in, a, in a clean way, so that there not only the work on these bands is, is, uh, is um, divided between the, between the MPI ranks, but also the data. So each MPI rank holds only the data for the, for the, for the wave functions it is responsible for. So that is the, that is the general, uh, the default way that VASP uh, parallelizes, and their data is distributed as well. And uh, okay, so that is that is uh, that is a way you you could uh, distribute your data. Obviously, uh, where would this run into limitations? Imagine that you have a very large cell and you put in one molecule, uh, so or 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 maybe only an atom. You put a, f a free atom in a very large cell. So this for this atom, you would have a very limited number of of wave functions that w would be computed, maybe four, right? But each of these each of these functions would have 
a very large number of plane wave coefficients. Uh, because you have a very large cell, so, so you have a, a large number of coefficients per function, but only very few functions, <laughs> so you couldn't effectively parallelize then. So there's an additional level, and that's actually the lowest level where we do parallelization, and that is where we further distribute um, the data and the work over plane wave coefficients. Uh, so within, uh, so now here we have uh, our MPI ranks are assigned uh, to, um, to work on particular bands, but we can do a further, further, we can combine this with a parallelization over plane wave coefficients, where I say, okay, now I can have, for instance, two MPI ranks that together are uh, responsible to work on my first wave function. And then the next two MPI ranks are responsible to work on the second wave function. And, and so on and so forth, right? So when you create the tension, the charge density with the band parallelization, is that done in a serial way, or is it, do you see what I mean? Is yeah, that, that, so these grids are, are divided in a different way, so, okay. yeah. So, that, so for, for densities and things like this, there's data is distributed in a different way. But it's done fully in parallel. Yes. Yeah. But there's communication involved, obviously. But then, yeah. And you can't do k-point parallelization of that. Stuff. Right. <coughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So that, that would be our lowest level of, of parallelization that you can. Yeah, and you can make any combination of these two. Um, and that is controlled by the tag and core. I don't know why I've written tags. Oh, yeah, because there's another one that controls <coughs> the same thing. But Encore is the one that I would advise you to use because I find the, the meaning of that tag uh, the, the easiest to explain. <laughs> and the other one does it exactly the same, but in a, in a very obscure uh, way. So if you set normally Encore is one, which <coughs> means that each band gets worked on by one core, so uh, by one MPI rank. And if you would uh, uh, set this to anything else, that means that you're, you're setting the number of MPI ranks that share the plane wave coefficients of one single uh, one electron function. <coughs> and so if I set n core to two, my coefficients for, for, uh, for, for um, a one electron orbital will be uh, distributed over two MPI ranks. Okay, so that is sort of, uh, so that has a few consequences and, uh, and I've tried to, uh, try to illustrate it here and it's not, not, the, not so important but I would like to, like to uh, sort of try to elucidate what I've mentioned before. So this would be a rank, number one and number two uh, and I have two of them and n core is one. And in that situation, my first function resides on core one, my second one resides on, on MPI rank two, and my third function resides on MPI rank one, and so on and so forth. And if I do, um, uh, and when they get worked on in terms of FFTs of these, of these functions, that happens locally within one rank, right? Um, so there are routines that, for instance, to compute these kinds of things like expectation values, eh, like, like a, a Hamilton matrix. Eh, for instance, if I have a Hamilton matrix element between uh, state one and state four, eh, they would need to, to communicate, right? Because well, this core one would like to uh, compute such an element, but it needs the information of, of core uh, four. And actually what we do is all-to-all -all communication. So we do a, complete redistribution of the data uh, to a situation where, so that's done internally, you don't have to, you have to care about this, but uh, we do a complete redistribution of the data where now MPI rank one will hold half of each of these functions and the second one, second rank <coughs> will hold the other half. And that makes these kind of, of evaluations much easier. 
because those are done on a plane wave by plane wave basis, so they can each now be responsible for parts of this matrix. So that is, that is where also all communication comes in, uh, in, in, in VASP. <coughs> so this is the other situation that I, that I showed you, eh, where we have more MPI ranks uh, in this case, but we set N core to something else than, uh, than two. So now we see that MPI rank one and two share the information uh, of band one um, on the and three and four of band two and so on and so forth. Uh, to do some to work on those, uh, we do parallel FFTs. So uh, so they work together to to do Fourier transforms of the of the bands, which is necessary obviously because they share the coefficients. And uh, to do such things, uh, those contractions, um, there's all to all communication again that brings uh, such a situation again in, in a situation <coughs> where one rank uh, has part of all the bands and the other rank has another part of all the bands and so, and so on and so forth. And back again if necessary. Okay, so, yeah? Since the weight functions are actually a sphere of points, yes. which are actual data layout. Yeah, that is, so, uh, this, um, so the data layout here, so what we do, we store them, uh, obviously we store only the components within the sphere. Yeah. Uh, for, for these, for, this, what, for the serial FFTs, they get put onto the mesh and then simply there's a simple 3D FFT. And uh, here it's, it's differently. In the, in, well, the parallel FFT is, uh, is an in-house production <coughs> where, uh, where you do it first along one direction. <coughs> so there we do an actual sphere to cube FFT. So you do less one-dimensional FFTs um, than you would uh, than you would do it here if you would do it naively. Yeah. So um, yes. So some considerations with respect. Uh, so how does this? So what could you conceivably say on on the outset about what would be wise choices for? For, uh, for these parallelization parameters. Well, k par, if you have k points, uh, if you have a lot of k points or, or a few k points and you, and you can afford the memory, then that is a very good thing to use. Always use it to, to, to its fullest. Um, if you uh, have large functions, uh, if you have a lot of plane waves per, per one electron function, definitely use this N core to distribute uh, the work over, over MPI ranks. Um, but do not set it to more <coughs> than, than the number of cores, the uh, physical cores that you have on one socket or on one package. So what does this mean? Uh, normally, or many of the hardware, and okay, the next generation hardware is going to be slightly different, but uh, many of the Haswell nodes, they consist of two uh, sockets. Uh, that have, uh, yeah, there's a few physical cores on each socket, so let's say 10 on socket 1 and, ten, and another 10 on socket 2, and those have, uh, they, they have very fast access to a, to a, to a certain block of memory <coughs> eh, within the socket. They have, they have probably access to the, to the memory of the other socket, but that takes slightly more time. So for instance, for these, oh sorry, for instance, for these um, FFTs, you wouldn't want to force the cores that reside on one socket to have to, uh, to uh, read in, uh, uh, work with the memory of the other socket. That wouldn't, that wouldn't be wise uh, from a performance point of view. So you wouldn't set this N core to anything larger than the number of cores per socket. Um, Is this specifically for hybrid version of VASP? No. No, no, this, this does not perta pertain to to the version that includes OpenMP. This is, this is true for, for both, actually. For the, what, but the version where we use OpenMP, we don't use this anymore. I, I'll, I'll come to this. Yes? So it says that core now works for hybrids. Uh, NPAR doesn't still? Or NPAR and NCore are exactly the same. So Well, they're not exactly the same, but <coughs> this NPAR was, was chosen in an idiotic way, the definition. And it's, it's almost impossible to describe it in... in, in <laughs> so NCore simply tells you I have NCore uh, ranks that work on one function. Yeah? And the other one is sort of the, uh, the uh, inverse of it, yeah, where you say um, 
and part tells you how many bands do I do in parallel. So if, if I have uh, 10 ranks and I say um, I do 10 bands in parallel, n par is 10, then each band gets worked on by one core. So which, which version starting from it? So Sorry? So the uh, k par and the n core for hybrids from which uh, last version? Ah, uh, oh. Uh, it's been there for for a bit, but but, but it, it should definitely be in in in, in, you know, in the current releases. So so um, ah yeah, no, it's not very prominent in our manual because our manual is really sort of lagging behind by quite a bit. Yeah, that's so, which is bad. Yeah, um, yes. So and you can use this level of parallelization over plane wave coefficients in connection with hybrid functionals now as well. Uh, that didn't used to be the case, uh, but that has been uh, resolved. Yes. So this, this is for the for the for the for our current release version, the version of LASP that um, that is parallelized purely using uh, MPI. Um, there, the version that you have actually been working on uh, on here, and that will be available to to our us users. Uh, at NERSC uh, is, a, is a new version that, that we are now uh, beta testing that uses a combination of, of OpenMP and MPI. And, uh, and actually, um, roughly speaking, <coughs> um, the lowest level of parallelization is, has been replaced by OpenMP parallelization. So in that version, you can uh, no longer, you shouldn't, uh, if you use more than one thread, you shouldn't uh, set NCore to anything else than one. Actually, it will simply be done by the code. Um, yes, so this level of parallelization will, uh, where, where I would have, which you could think of as the, as the uh, intra-node or intra-socket uh, level of parallelization will be taken care of by OpenMP. That has proven to be more um, efficient, uh, definitely on on uh, on the current uh, hardware. Um, yes, <coughs> so that 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 is very nice. <coughs> so, yeah, that that concludes actually my part of uh, of what I wanted to say. Yeah. Do you have any plans to do the? Parallelization hybrid in the GW over the full body integrals. You know, is there an essentially some sort of dependent, like some of the other codes do that? Right? You know, that gives you, you know, that gives you so much more parallelization. So we, so we currently, so for the new GW code that that yeah. that we have uh, written, um, we yeah, where we where we go through these greens functions, um, we don't parallelize over these <coughs> over, over four electron uh, quantities. Yeah. So, I mean, that puts scale again, like n to the power of four, right? So, yeah. uh, because that, that would mean, that, that would, if, if we would compute our, our polarizabilities uh, again using this, these four mm -hmm. electron quantities, yeah. that would, we wouldn't reach this cubic scaling. Uh, yeah. yeah. If you're doing hybrid, say, then you can exploit that. I mean, a lot of codes do exploit that level of power. So the problem is it's kind of orthogonal to what you want for GGA and LDA. So. Right. Uh, no, there, there's no current plan yeah. to, to do that. No. Um, yes. Ling Ji. So you're done here. Yeah, so I think then we can start the Q and A session a bit earlier. Okay. What about we the rest of the time just to do a round table discussion and question and answer? Uh, okay. I thought you would you wanted to, to comment on, on on HPC considerations as well, but no, actually I had a running doubt, you know, how to okay. Okay. Ah, okay. So you have this for yeah. for this afternoon. Okay. So I 
Uh, okay, before we good. Can have a QA yeah, fine. Sure. So we have one online that's yeah. related to this immediately. Do, uh, would you recommend then, uh, particularly with the new version on Cori that has OpenMP threading, to use one MPI per socket? That is not completely, well, for the Haswell, for the Haswell part uh, of Cori, I would say yes. One or two, one or two ranks uh, should be optimal. Um, for the upcoming uh, night's landing part, that is still a bit up in the air. What is what what is what the best mix uh, is? Yeah. I have a question about Encore. Yeah. <coughs> I feel like it's better to have just one. Use it as one. So where do we need to increase it? Do we need more memory per band? No, no, no. Th this doesn't uh, this doesn't um, affect your your memory requirements. So both Encore uh, equals one and Encore anything other than one uh, that doesn't increase your storage demands. In that in that sense, these two levels. So th these were the, the, uh, the are are sort of standard levels of of parallelization before this one was added. Uh, there the data is fully distributed over the MPI ranks. So that is sort of what, what this tries to express, right? So uh, you, can either, you, can either have, uh, you can either have it reside on one uh, band or one half on, on one and one half on the other. That doesn't change the amount of coefficients you have to store, right? So at, at the cost of, of, of communication, obviously, at some point. So, um, so we expect so the speed to go up and then down. Well, there, there's. I expect there to be. I expect there to be uh, an optimal uh, point, yeah, right? Yeah. So, if you want to go, especially if you want to go to uh, for large for a large largest uh, system, if you would want to scale <coughs> up to to many nodes, you cannot rely on Encore as one. You would have to increase this, definitely. So, in the case of uh, many K points, uh, would it be okay to extend uh, K part to up to the number of compute nodes? Uh, yes, that would be that would be uh, in principle okay, provided you can uh, you can afford the memory. Because you multiply the amount of memory. I mean, th that that would be sort of a, an, an it would, if you if you can afford it memory-wise, it can be a nice way to do, uh, because the amount of communication you then, uh, most of the communication will then take place on the node, and will not go through any interconnect. Yes, yes. So that that can of course help a lot, right? Same, the same underlying idea is, is, is mentioned here, right? So that you, that you wouldn't, uh, sorry, that you wouldn't increase this beyond the number of cores per, per socket. Uh, you wouldn't force communication uh, between processes that, that do not share, uh, a, 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 that, are, that are not as close to, to a certain portion of memory as, uh, as other ones, right? So that <coughs> Do you comment on the use of OpenMP and uh, re reduction of memory because you got an espresso one of the uses of OpenMP is basically to deal with real life systems? Yes. So in our case, I mean, uh, the, 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 the areas where we do, um, um, so in the areas where, where we use OpenMP as an additional level of parallelization, there's a few examples of this. Uh, hybrid functionals are examples of this. But it's not, not essentially mentioned. I didn't mention that before. So I said it was a replacement for a certain uh, MPI layer of, of parallelization. So in the areas where you replace MPI parallelization <coughs> with OpenMP parallelization, you do not save any memory, right? Because it was, it was distributed already. Um, there are, we, we have used OpenMP as well to uh, introduce additional layers of parallelization and there of course the nice thing is that you do first of all you you do not have to redesign your data structure because openmp uses a shared memory uh, model 
uh, and it doesn't, for the same reason, it doesn't uh, increase the amount of memory that is used. Yes. So, but because we, we had already uh, quite a lot of stuff uh, parallelized under, <coughs> uh, under MPI, right, so it is not the prime argument in, 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 in that case, right, because data was already cleanly distributed and where it was not, we have not introduced OpenMP. So where did we not distribute the data that was at the very highest level mm -hmm. uh, in this k-point parallelization? And there we don't rely on OpenMP uh, for an additional layer of parallelization. The problem is that what we wanted to, uh, to avoid is um, have MPI communication inside of OpenMP parallel regions. So we didn't want to, so actually we wanted to introduce OpenMP to reduce the number of MPI ranks and not increase them in the sense that I now open uh, in a parallel region, I create 10 threads that all start to uh, communicate through open MPI or to, uh, through MPI. So that was sort of the, the idea uh, why we have put the, the open MP parallelization at the very lowest level. Okay. There is a magic number of operation If, there's a, if there is a magic number, yeah. um, and no, no, unfortunately uh, not, because it would depend on, on system size. Uh, so, uh, bec because, of, because of the fact that it, that it, that it, that it um, sorry, that it acts mostly at this level, uh, parallelization over plane wave coefficients, because of this fact, uh, if you have a lot of uh, a lot of one electron functions that, that in itself are very small, then it wouldn't bring a lot to, uh, to use a lot of th threads here. Neither would it bring a lot to use a lot of MPI ranks there, right? There's always the, if you have a lot of data, you can distribute the work over it. If you have only a small amount of data, be it bands or coefficients, it, uh, the overhead will start to hurt if you, if you distribute it over too many processes. And that, of course, depends on, on the particular calculation that you're doing. How many one electron functions you have, how many coefficients you have per function. That is, can't be said a priori what's the, what the best, uh, what the best um, mix uh, would be. I think the, the, the part of the code that is still almost in its entirety uh, MPI parallelized is the part where we do linear response to magnetic fields, so the NMR part. I think for the rest, almost all, I can't think of any part that has not uh, been parallelized using OpenMP as well. I mean, it's still, it is still a, a beta version, right? So there will be still work on, and it might be, it will be still worked on, and it might uh, uh, change still. Uh, and it will definitely not be as stable yet as our pure MPI version. Um, yes. <coughs> No more questions, maybe we'll stop here for the lecture.